Hi, I'm Tony Bowen and welcome to my Corn Country Rails. In a few minutes, some of my regular operating crew will show up for our first operating session of the season. The dispatcher's board behind me will be a beehive of activity of my dispatcher will be handing out train orders and moving magnets along the way of where trains have their kind of authority to go. Our session's going to be a little short today because we had a couple members cancel out on us, but I've always found, just like the real railroad, crew doesn't show up. I guess we'll have to find other people to, you know, fill those jobs. And so of the members we'll have that will come today, they may be able to run more trains than, than usual if, if time allows. Our normal sessions usually start at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and we go until about 4 o'clock or so, taking about midway through kind of a a little snack break and just a chance to kind of talk about how things are going in, in the hobby and just in the operating session in general. So let me show you the dispatcher's board before uh, the seat that I'm in gets filled with our dispatcher. For a normal operating um, session, we always have kind of our uh, dispatcher sheet. So it has all the trains listed across the top, we give out all the information such as locomotive numbers, who the conductor is, caboose number, engineer, time the crew went on duty, time they were released, and number of cars. And then down below is just kind of a copy of a small insert of what would be found in our timetable that has the mile post markers, has the car capacity for the sightings and that. And on either side we have our westbound trains and then we have our eastbound trains and the dispatcher then also has this magnetic board that I built and so the upper staging kind of starts here so trains that are east have the blue dots trains that are west have the red dots and essentially they go down the helix and so the lower part of the board is essentially the lower deck of the layout And then, of course, once I get to the lower end, it goes up the helix. There's Taho sighting, the sighting I have at the top of the helix. And then essentially they work their way across the upper deck of the layout, which is represented on the upper part of my dispatcher's board. And essentially as train crews OSN, the magnets are just moved to where those trains are. And crew members have their radio operating uh, devices to talk to dispatchers and other train crews. I have a newbie working the yard today, so I kind of put his train order sheet here so the dispatcher could also kind of help him out as far as things he needs to do and the kind of the order that the industries need to be switched in. For my regular crew, so that have been here a long time they have theirs written out and are a little more simplistic because they know the lay of the railroad a little bit so this is kind of a, a fun spot a lot of people get intimidated by dispatching but to be quite honest you're kind of in control of the whole railroad you have somebody that upsets you and you want them to sit in a siding for a little time out you can do that or if things are moving along slowly you can, you know, sometimes add some excitement into the, into the train lineup. The other thing is you always have to be kind of uh, aware of where trains are at. With a single track railroad, we certainly don't want any cornfield meets. So the dispatcher I have today does an excellent job, so I don't have any fears of that happening. As I move into the train room, I have clerked the railroad already. Um, I have a new person who is going to be working the Grinnell Yard, and so to help them out, I've already pulled the cards and placed them near the cars. So the cars and cards are right by each other, so that he certainly can pull the correct ones from the industries. Now, as cars come into the yard, he'll have to figure out where they go. I can't make it too simple for him. At first, they've got to do a little learning on their own first. 
I always enjoy hosting an operating session because this is when the railroad really starts to come to life. I mean, I can run one or two trains, even four trains by myself, just in a continuous loop. But when it's a regular operating session, you get the full effect of the railroad being operated by crews in a prototypical manner. And so it really brings the railroad to life. Plus, we always have a good time. I modeled roughly a 47 mile stretch from Homestead, Iowa to Grinnell, Iowa. And so you can't really have a bunch of trains out here at one time, but we usually have at least two mainline trains going in either direction, plus a local that's working. Then at some of our other towns, there'll be a switch engine crew that is setting out cars for those mainline trains to pick up. And then we just continue through the rotation. So it looks like the guy here at Brooklyn has a lot of cars that he just needs to spot for industries. And it looks like from our last session, the cars have already been pulled here. And looks like they broke the train for the crossing and there for cars that will be picked up. Of course, no operating session would be complete without having a variety of snacks. So we have some festival type Halloween cookies and Rice Krispie treats. So as crews come in, they can also grab an apron from down there, grab the radio, throttle if they need it. And then also I keep the nice dollar Walmart nail aprons on hand in case somebody wants to wear an apron to keep all their car cards in, the radio in, any notes like that. And then we have our lineup for getting our operating session started. And as jobs are completed, these empty slots that are there, crew members can mark up which job they want next. In the lower staging yard, other than a couple trains that are made up for the day to leave the yard, looks pretty empty. But I have a feeling by the end of the day, we'll see a lot more cars filling up this yard. I'm just watching mine going. Oh, it's on. Oh, it's 39. Oh, it's oh, 39. 82 out. Whoa. Thought that was mine. Are you showing yourself out of Moringa? 906. 906? Oh, Bob's going to help us with our caboose. Steve, are you going to use There we go. 
Uh, he didn't get you? quite a solid. <laughs> yeah. From what I'm following, no. Close. I might uh, give it maybe one more one kick on the throttle. Right there we go. There we go. Now it's smooth. Still 40 miles. Well, oh, he can come pick these up. Oh, but I'm not done. Well, that's that's short and through. That's fine. I don't know. Just going 82 out. Time out is going to happen. Ooh. 938. Oh, 938. So we're going to dive into the caboose. Yep, because that scale test car has to stay in front of the caboose. Uh oh. Don't ever say uh oh. That's not it. You're on the ground. No. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I wonder why that went on the ground. It's weird. Don't mess up. I'm watching you. We need good video evidence. Okay. We'll just throw that switch for the main. There we go. And I don't dispatch know. I don't know what clear the main. 828 to dispatch okay. for clear so of the main. 10-4, thank you. Uh, you need to depart. Before, I need you to uh, hold the siding there until I can get... 84 past you. 10 4. 1200 out. We're on the move. Time out. 325. Thank you. <laughs> Dispatch to 81. Have you um, uh, arrived at Brooklyn yet? Negative, I held uh, West End Park Forester. You have a second, sir? Okay, 10-4, thank you. Uh, 